thought it was completely unnecessary. I hope he puts it all behind him and moves forwards, but who knows with it. That wasn't for me personally. Um, he's rubbing, he's washing his dirty laundry in public too much. Don't need it. I think it's, I think it's a bit wrong, but I hope they're all all right. <laughs> um, I have a lot of sympathy for Prince Harry, honestly. Um, I think what he's, uh, what he's come out is not very comfortable. The things that he's saying is not very comfortable, but he's also a human being and has right to his own opinions and, and um, his ability to say, you know, how he feels in real life. So I do have a bit of sympathy for him. Uh, I mean, he has his own right, um, each to their own. It's, he has his own freedom to express his side of the story. So, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. I don't know. For me, I'm just, I'm kind of like stuck between because for me, um, there's always two sides to a story. So um, coming out, I'm not sure exactly um, who's telling the truth, but they, there must be some, some sort of truth of what Harry is talking about. But, you know, I'm kind of like stuck between. To be honest, I think we've all got our own problems in this world and it's... You know, it's a first world problem to have whatever they're going through. They should just keep it to themselves and deal with it. I don't think it's, it doesn't really bother me. That's it. I think it was a lot more far reaching and candid than I expected, especially having watched the Netflix documentary, which compared to this, I think seemed very guarded um, and didn't really let us in on a lot of things that we didn't know. I think this one was different in that uh, he gave receipts basically he showed us the examples of what he was talking about he really honed in on that collusion with the media um and he didn't really hold back um and we got to see a very sort of personal portrait of his family life and his upbringing um and i think you know my overall feeling from it was that it was quite sad especially hearing about what happened um when he lost his mother um but what i thought was really interesting towards the end um of the itv interview and i think tom bradby did a fantastic job in kind of getting him to open up further about those allegations of racism or as he labeled it unconscious bias which we haven't seen previously and i think that will be the headline that people run with they were very similar and they covered broadly the same themes. But what I think was different is that they were translated for different audiences. I think with the American one, Harry perhaps felt more licensed to kind of talk about the British public as a whole because it wasn't his direct audience. Um, and it was very interesting uh, when he was talking about the beginning of his relationship with Meghan and he said that the British public kind of thought he, she must be a witch because he's changed, he's changed. Um, and him directly addressing that sort of parasocial relationship that the public have with him, having seen him develop as a young boy, a young bereaved troubled boy and now into this kind of father and family man and the kind of disconnect that we felt as a result of that. Um, I think he was able to speak about that more freely. And also, uh, I think what stood out for me at the very beginning of the Anderson Cooper interview, the fact that they directly said, we reached out to Buckingham Palace for comment, and they asked to see the interview before commenting. Um, I think that's very telling. And in doing so, they've kind of lifted the lid on this whole idea of press collusion with the royal family and royal sources and what that actually means. Um, and I think the only reason that was able to happen really is because of their distance um, and their lack of need for any sort of relationship with the British royal family. The Camilla example is perhaps the best one he could have used to illustrate his point. Um, I think, you know, I've worked in PR. I think anyone that's worked in PR will tell you that when there's an established narrative in the media, about someone, especially in the way there was about Camilla, you know, being the third person in the marriage and the misery she caused the kind of sainted Diana. That is not something that ever goes away by accident. It goes away by deliberate kind of rehabilitation, working with, as Harry said, trading of information. Um, and I don't think it will surprise anyone that that happened. When you look at the evolution behind Camilla, um, and her coming to be queen consort today, 
when she first married Charles, the palace thought it necessary to say that she would never be queen consort because she was that unpopular. And to come from that to going to who she is today, it's probably the biggest PR win of the decades. I mean, I would be delighted if I did that for one of my clients. So I think him saying that kind of should have served to open people's eyes a bit. And the fact that he mentioned that, you know, private conversations between her and William made their way into the media when there were only two people in those rooms and William didn't do it, speaks volumes. Even if we were to say, okay, that's normal for siblings, this shouldn't be looked at as a story about a normal family, like a pair of brothers from down the road, because it's not. It's a story about how the future king conducts himself. And Harry actually brought to light another example of violence, um, you know, when they were at the funeral of the Duke of Edinburgh and William sort of twisted his head to look at him. Um, we should be thinking about this in terms of this is a person, this is a family that is funded by the British taxpayer that have still to this day quite an inordinate amount of power and influence over our lives. It is ultimately, therefore, in the public interest for us to know how they are conducting themselves and how that family relates to one another. It seems to me, again, quite sad that he was saying, when asked if there was a chance of reconciliation, he said 100%, because for other people watching, I mean, we obviously aren't in the family. And we don't know their dynamic. We don't know conversations that have taken place. But for people watching, it seems like that is now a very far off possibility. and. I guess the fact that he's still hoping for it is maybe quite sad on some levels, but again, we have no idea if that may come to fruition. I do think it's probably put a lot more distance between them because for the royal family, this is glaringly in the face of their playbook. They rely on being a little bit mysterious, um, a little bit aloof, and having that air of mystique that people want to know more about them and think they deserve their position. And if this is portraying them as, you know, just a normal family, then people are going to question why we're giving a normal family millions and millions a year. And why have we allowed a normal family to reach this position? So they have something about them that means that it's justified. Um, and I think that is probably what they're the most terrified of. I, I think that kind of makes sense because it's one thing, like he said, to make peace with what's actually happened. And he assured us that he's done that. But in terms of forgiving the other person and, you know, really rebuilding those relationships, I think that his whole quest, the whole reason for putting these things out into the open is to force them maybe to take some sort of accountability and to uh, even just admit that these things happen. Because even after the interview with Oprah, there was that line, recollections may vary from the palace. It's kind of at every stage they've sort of refuted these claims, whether that's directly or indirectly. Interestingly, there was, again, another source that said that um, Buckingham Palace and Prince William was ready to refute anything that wasn't true. And I suppose the fact that they haven't maybe tells us everything we need to know. Um, but... I think what he's hoping for, what it seems he's hoping for, is some sort of statement saying, you know, this did happen. We need to work on these things and we're sorry. And I think he'll be wasting a long time for that.